is the moment you've all been waiting for. It's time! Fighting out of New York City, he is the reigning, defending, undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. That's how you start a fucking show right there, boy. <laughs> All right, let's see what we're working with. What's up, y'all? Is that yours right there, bro? Latina? Okay. You gotta be careful with her. You on birth control? Maybe, maybe not. Now, you need certified yes from them, okay? Don't fuck with that pull-out method with Latinas. You come on a Latin girl's stomach, her belly button just opens up and takes that shit in, dog. Like fucking hungry, hungry hippos in there, dog. <laughs> you gotta come on her back. That's why they call them wetbacks. Now, guys, guys, everybody, everybody, we're just getting started, guys. We're just getting started, okay? <laughs> What's up, white boys? How was storming the Capitol? Good? You know they were there early too, huh? Day early, just tailgating and shit. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, yo. I miss Trump, man. <laughs> not like that, calm down, QAnon, fucking. It's a comedy special, not a Cracker Barrel, relax, lady, fucking. I'm not talking about the politics, okay? But the entertainment? Was that you, Indian girl? Oh shit, I was about to say. You putting a non and QAnon for sure right there. Can we just be honest, it was entertaining as fuck? Right, like for four years he had our group chats on fire. It was unbelievable. You don't miss those texts like in the middle of the night from your boy like, yo, turn on the news, he's making fun of crippled people. You're like, there's no fucking way. There's no fucking way. He's the president of the United States of America. It's not me watching Breaking Bad. There's no way. He's making fun of cripple people. You turn on the news. Dead! Full T-Rex, dog. Cocked his shit, dropped it, beating his chest like Matthew McConaughey, bro. It was every week. You remember that shit? Yo, turn on the news. He's shooting paper towels in Puerto Ricans. You're like, there's no fucking way. There's no fucking way. This is impossible. Okay, they just had a hurricane, they're sitting in four feet of water, there's no way he went down there and shot the paper towels at these poor Puerto Ricans. You turn on the news, jab step, fade away! I don't care what your politics is, it, but it was an unbelievable time. Can we agree on that? It was an unbelievable time. And uh, now we got Biden and uh, what a fucking snooze fest this guy is, dude, just. He's boring, I'm sure he's a nice guy, but he's fucking boring, okay? Be honest, is there anybody here who loves Joe Biden? We have any Taliban in here? Is there anybody? <laughs> You're a Taliban? Go home, bro, you're free! You got your country back! You're not really Taliban, you're just Afghani. You're from Pakistan. That's not even the same shit, you racist motherfucker. <laughs> and who is this black dude co-signing everything you're doing? 
What the fuck is going on up there? Wait a minute, are you black or are you where he's from? You're from Somalia, hey! You changed up once you got over here, that's a fact. You got them braces, you are not the captain now, you fucking. Motherfucker. Motherfucker was Captain Crunch. Did you see the teeth in that fucker's face? I'm just saying he's fucking boring. Like, be honest with me right now. Do any of you love Joe Biden? No. Right? Biden ain't got no merch. Like, that's how I judge presidents now, bro. Can you move merch or can you not? Because Trump had merch, bro. That MAGA hat was iconic. Bro, that was white people's teardrop tattoo. That's what that was. You saw a white dude with the hat, you were like, yeah! <laughs> he don't give a fuck! <laughs> In public, dog! In public, the hat is the last thing you put on your body before you leave the house. It's so easy not to wear it. But some people looked at that hat like, how difficult do I want my day to be? <laughs> fuck it, I choose violence today. I used to love seeing that hat in the wild, bro. Because I'm from New York, nobody ever has a hat. You never see a MAGA hat in New York. So when I'm on the road, I'm just waiting for it. Because the energy around the hat was amazing. Right, because the people that wear the MAGA hat, I don't know if you notice this, but they're always in the best mood, smiling ear to ear, just cheesed up. Because the hat does all the shit talk. Right? They're just walking around like, hey, Hector, how you doing? But the hat's like, we're building a fucking wall, Hector. <laughs> we build that fucking wall, bro. MAGA, make amigos go away, Hector. You know what this is. <laughs> I remember the first time I saw a MAGA hat confrontation. <laughs> these are the best. I'm talking about in real life. I'm not talking about on Twitter. I'm talking about real life MAGA hat confrontation. I was in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and I saw, okay. Uh, I'm in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Actually, you know, I'm lying. I was actually in East St. Paul, but nobody knows what that is. So I said Minneapolis, but I had to be honest with you right now. Even though there's a fucking special taping, now we gotta edit around the whole goddamn thing. <laughs> fucking leave it in. Leave it in, this piece of shit in the balcony. I had to say, yeah, in Minnesota. And I can't lie to you people. Okay? I was in fucking New Brunswick, New Jersey. No. <laughs> I'm in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Okay? And I'm at a Baskin Robbins. Okay? And I saw a dude wearing a MAGA hat. And uh, the fun thing about it was uh, he wasn't ordering ice cream. He was working at Baskin Robbins. <laughs> okay? And he wasn't a GM, he wasn't Baskin, he wasn't Robbins. <laughs> He's just a regular minimum wage employee serving up ice cream MAGA, bro. <laughs> just staring at people, vanilla only today. Just... <laughs> Ain't gonna be no rainbow, no chocolate, nothing. Just pure Christian vanilla ice cream. The way God intended ice cream and countries to be made. So I'm staring at this dude, I'm like, yeah, this is going down. This is the guy, something's gonna happen, right? All of a sudden this couple walks into the Baskin Robbins and the couple is wearing matching Vikings outfits, head to toe Vikings, okay? It's July. It's not even preseason. These are bona fide lunatics, these people just walking around town. Full Vikings outfits, right? The couple walks in. The girl in the Viking couple starts to get a little upset when she sees the MAGA hat. I don't know what she's saying, but I know it's white woman rage. I know what it is, right? I got a white fiance. I know about this stuff, okay? There's a problem that has nothing to do with me. I need to solve it, right? It's just... You're offended, I'm bored. Let's do something about it. I need to stand up for my black friends I don't have. No. <laughs> so 
So, all of a sudden, the girl Viking breaks away from her boyfriend, beelines it for the MAGA hat dude, walks right up to him and goes, how the fuck could you wear that hat? Immediately, I'm like, he's shooting this bitch. This bitch is dead. This bitch is dead. She don't even know it. That's Second Amendment. She is fucking dead. I got my phone out, landscape. I'm ready. I'm ready. You think I'm missing this? You think I'm missing this? I zoomed out 0.5. I zoomed out 0.5. Some of y'all got Android phones. You too poor to even understand what that is. Okay? Get a real phone like an adult, all right? Stop fucking up the group chat with your green text. We don't appreciate it. WhatsApp, we don't care about your little third world group chats, okay? What you discussing over there? They build a well in your hometown? What's happening? I'm fucking ready to go. I'm so wide, I'm gonna get the bullet leaving the gun and entering her forehead. I'm posting it, I'm viral. It's over. It's a wrap. This chick keeps on laying in on this dude. Just fucking screaming at him. You know what those hats stand for? For the disrespect of women. You know what those hats stand for? For the mistreatment of women. You know what those hats stand for? For the abuse of women. And I'm just looking at this chick like, you're wearing a Viking outfit. I don't know if you're familiar with Viking history, but they were the first grab them by the pussy people. I mean, it's literally all they did for thousands of years is just sail around the world grabbing pussies. And we're so crazy, we named a football team after them. We would never have a team called the Colorado Cosbys. You know, that's... I'm not gonna lie, that'd be a fun game to announce though. Looks like another come from behind victory for the Cosby's this weekend. <laughs> it's like every time they catch them sleeping. Jim, do you notice this? Just keep catching them sleeping. It's good to see them spiking end zones, not cocktails though. I will say that's an improvement for the Cosby's. So I'm looking at this Viking twat and I'm just like, I should be hating her, okay? But I'm actually so jealous. Cause I'm like, I wish I could walk around that oblivious to what a complete hypocrite I am. I know I'm a hypocrite. I gotta deal with that shit every day. That's taxing. Michael Jackson comes on and I gotta settle that debt. I love the music, but he touches toddlers, right? Like we know he does it. Wait a minute, do some of y'all think? How many of y'all think Michael Jackson did not touch those kids? Be honest, I'd rather you be honest. We got another one. Okay, okay. I wish, I wish I could be you. Every time Mike comes on, you get to listen to King of Pop while I'm listening to King of Pop and Cherries. You know how fucking lucky you are? You know how lucky you are you get to do that? I have to be honest with my feelings, okay? Here's the reality, okay? I feel like Michael Jackson touched those kids. But I also feel like he didn't touch enough kids for me to stop listening to his music. I do feel that way. I do feel that way. I'm not proud of that, but that is the way I feel, okay? You could probably feed him 10, 12 more, and I'm gonna keep listening to that shit. Every single time it comes on. Do you remember? No, I don't. <laughs> not at all. Keep on going, Mike. Do your fucking thing, okay? I know I'm wrong to have these feelings, by the way. I've tried to change these feelings, okay? I watched that documentary about them snitching ass kids. I watched it, I did watch it. I watched it, okay? I'm starting with the man in the mirror, all right? I'm trying to change his ways. I watched him, I watched them fucking crying the whole documentary. <laughs> I was molested by my hero. You lucky son of a bitch. Your hero? That's a best case scenario molest, is it not? <laughs> Most people getting diddled by their bus driver, not their hero. Your hero. My hero growing up was Michael Jordan. <laughs> if Michael Jordan molested me, 
I could walk it off. <laughs> Probably in the freshest Jordans you ever seen in your life. <laughs> hey, bro, where you get them shits, man? You too old for these, dog. Don't even worry about it. They only got these in youth sizes, homie. But I said to myself, I'm watching this documentary up until I find out what Mike did to those kids. Because once I find out what he did to the kids, that's it. I can't like him anymore. I can't even listen to music anymore. Once I find out what he did to the kids, and then I will move on, I'm done with Mike. I got to the point, and basically they said, did Michael Jackson lick their asshole? <laughs> and what I found out about me is, <laughs> that's not enough. <laughs> A licked asshole? That's cleaning. Can we be honest here? That right there, you got your ass cleaned by Michael Jackson. That's a Billie Jean bidet, you ungrateful bastard. You got your asshole licked by the greatest asshole licker in history. Michael Jackson literally shaved down his nose so he could get deeper in those boys' asses. Do you remember MJ by the time he died? He looked like Voldemort, okay? Just flat face with three holes in it like a bowling ball, just head banging boy booties. <laughs> I'm just saying, we have to put things in perspective. A licked asshole from your hero. <laughs> if Michael Jordan. <laughs> If Michael Jeffrey Jordan <laughs> took that glorious tongue of his, you know the tongue. <laughs> if he took that tongue and attacked my rim the way he attacked rims in the league, <laughs> if he grabbed my hips and shattered my backboard, <laughs> are you kidding me? I'd be honored. That's not even gay, he's the GOAT, that's bestiality. I'm still proud of it. That would be the crowning achievement of my childhood. Michael Jordan licked my asshole. Played that night and dropped 39 points. I'm the reason he had the flu. Oh, you had some bad pizza, Mike? Yeah, pizza this ass. Why don't you be honest with the people, okay? We filmed it and everything. We're calling it Face Jam. Tell the truth about what happened that night. <clears throat> How you guys doing? Good. What's up, Bill? Hi. Hi. Just saying hi, you know? How long have you guys been together? Almost three years? Good shit. He said, almost. <laughs> what were you doing in the beginning, yo? <laughs> you throwing that coochie around Austin? What's going on here? <laughs> he th oh, you're engaged and everything. Ooh, congratulations. You get married, you guys move in together, you learn a lot of shit. I learned a lot of shit about my girl when we moved in together. Uh, I learned she's a fucking psychopath. Uh, <laughs> just based on her Netflix queue. That's it. Just. I turn on her Netflix, it's just every type of serial killer documentary you could imagine. There's a guy who kills nuns, guy who kills hookers, guy who kills kids, cooking show. Who watches, who watches six hours of serial killers and then British Bake Off to wash it down? How many of you ladies in here enjoy serial killer shows? This is why you don't like sports, I just wanna let you know. Sports aren't violent enough for you. You'll be watching football, you see someone unconscious on the ground, and you're like, okay, but why is no one raping him? What's going on? What's going on here? I mean, you already have a mask and gloves on. No one's gonna know it's you. Put a dick in that fucking man. 
Make this entertaining, please. It's unbelievable. And you know the craziest thing about it is it is like you ladies will watch like serial killers and fucking rapists all the time and it won't change your behavior at all. <laughs> this is some real shit. She watches a documentary about this dude who would uh, rape women who are jogging in a park at night, right? Horrifying, tragic, right? After watching the documentary, she went for a jog in a fucking park. <laughs> Bro, women are way braver than men. It's not even close to... If a single man in history was jogging in the park and got raped, we're not even jogging on treadmills no more after that. <laughs> Cardio's out the fucking equation. You pull up to the gym, you see your boy in the elliptical, you're like, fam, get the fuck off that shit! They raping dudes these days! Find a bench where your asshole's protected! Definitely don't go on that rowing machine. You just teasing them on that rowing machine. And that's a fucked up headline too. Nobody ever talks about that. But jogger raped? That's a fucked up headline, yo. Don't ever let that be a headline with me. Schultz was raped jogging in the park at night. Schultz was raped jogging in the park at night. Motherfucker, rest assured. I was running as fast as I could. Who's jogging, yo? You don't think I'm hitting the high knees? I got a rapist behind me, bro. There's a butt naked man with running shoes chasing me in the motherfucking park. I can hear his feet hit the ground, dick slapping against his stomach. You don't think I'm tapping turbo a couple times? Schultz was running as fast as humanly possible when an Olympic rapist, a gold from the rape Olympics. It's probably Jamaican. They the fastest anyway. A Jamaican gold medalist from the rape Olympics hawked him down and took that ass against his will even though he fought valiantly. That's your headline. You print the whole shit or nothing at all. My fucking family reads the newspaper. How am I supposed to go to Thanksgiving my whole family looking at me like, yo, don't pass him the stuff and he already had enough stuff. I gotta bring the Jamaican rapist to dinner to clear my name, yo. Donovan, tell them what really happened in the park, yo. They don't believe me. Tell them what really fucking happened in the park. Please, tell them. My mans was running as fast as humanly possible. Some might even say it was cool running in that park. But I made them feel the rhythm. Feel the rhyme. I got you, white boy. It's butt fuck time. Y'all are cool. <laughs> Y'all are cool. It is a weird thing, though, man. Ladies, why are you so obsessed with the serial killer shit? Oh, because the guy's hot. Ted Bundy. This is good that you said that. <laughs> I'm really glad you brought up Ted Bundy, because I asked my girl to play a uh, serial killer thing, and we watched two together. The first one we watched, I turned off, because it was the female serial killer, Eileen Warnos, you know her? She killed three people, which is like some affirmative action bullshit. Uh, <laughs> three people, you're not a serial killer. That's a DUI, sweetheart, give it a rest. Okay? It's a recall on broccoli, three people. <laughs> Mother Teresa killed more than three people, okay? Sit down. <laughs> Next one she put on was Ted Bundy. And... He's the GOAT. <laughs> He's the GOAT. He's the greatest serial killer of all time. It's undeniable. And I'll tell you why. It's not because he killed 50 women. That's easy. Anybody could do that. That's... <laughs> I could kill 50 women with a pair of Lululemon pants. That's light work. Just... <laughs> hey, they're giving out free Lulus in the alley. Yeah. Just fuck it. <laughs> I play whack a Megan for 30 minutes. I got 50 bodies. That's light. That's light. That's light. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. The reason he's so prolific is because he killed 50 women driving a tan Volkswagen Beetle. I'm gonna say that again, because that is impressive. He killed 50 women driving a tan Volkswagen Beetle, okay? Some of y'all drive Teslas, can't get no pussy, dorks. The doors open by themselves, never a woman's legs, huh, you losers? <laughs> My car is electric, so is your fleshlight virgin. Shut the fuck up about it. 
I'm watching this documentary. I'm like, yo, thank God this motherfucker didn't drive a Porsche, bro. We might not have any women left in America if he was driving a Porsche. A Porsche? Are you kidding me? Only reason I finished the documentary is because I need to know the pickup line he was using to get these women into a tan Volkswagen Beetle. That's a valuable line. I might have a son one day, and I'm going to give him that shit instead of a car. I get to the point in the documentary where they share the line. I will tell you guys the line tonight if you want me to tell y'all. Okay, on one condition. Ladies, please control your pussies when I say this shit, please. I know how powerful this line is. Do a Kegel, just lock your shit up, okay? Cause I don't want y'all soaking up and sliding off your fucking seats. Okay, this is a problem, all right? He would walk out of the worst car ever made. Walk up to a woman he's never met in his life. And he'd go, excuse me, miss. My car broke down. Do you think you could help me fix it? <laughs> what I said to my girl was, this is disgusting. The way he's taking advantage of their kindness and goodwill. What I felt burning inside of me was, these chicks deserve to die, okay? <laughs> they had it coming, can you fix my car? Ladies, you can't fix a car. <laughs> you can't park a car, how the fuck are you gonna fix the car? It's 1970, I don't even think you were working yet, you definitely were mechanics. <laughs> Craziest part of that whole documentary they barely even touch on, and that is, of all the women that Bundy fucked and killed, there was actually one woman that he fucked, didn't kill, kept fucking. And this chick got me walking around now like, damn. <laughs> this pussy amazing, y'all. This shit, wow. <laughs> he killed you, bitches? That's crazy. That's so different. That's so different. He made me breakfast. He made you dead, bitch? You better check your pH, sweetheart. Your shit was woofing. You had that woof, baby. I got that wop. Get it together. All right, hold on, guys. I gotta speak to the people at home real quick. Listen, I know a few things are different here, okay? The hair, I'm even married now. Ignore that. We gotta talk about important shit, all right? And that's you thinking you found a way around the system. You're sitting there watching this on YouTube going, I didn't even have to buy the special. Not so fast. You're gonna support, okay? And you're gonna do that by gambling with the best gambling platform on the planet, betonline.ag, and using my promo code, Andrew. Why are they the best? Because they sponsored this special, uncensored, unfiltered, uncut. So we love them. You get to gamble on all sports. NBA, UFC, football, soccer. They even have non-sports, WNBA. Anything you can imagine, you can gamble on at betonline.ag and they're matching 50% of your initial deposit, okay? That means you put in $1,000, they give you $500 free to gamble with. They're only doing up to 1,000 because some of you are maniacs, but put in as much as you want. Betonline.ag, promo code Andrew. Now let's get back to this special. Looking couple, man. Uh, that's all. Nothing else. I just <laughs> want to make someone feel good for a second. Can I just make them feel good? Who's that guy next to you? Don't know him. Don't know him? Okay. Which GameStop do you manage? <laughs> that's fucked up. Shit just pops in our head and we can't say it. You ever have a thought so fucked up? You're like, damn, bro, I didn't even know I was capable of that shit. <laughs> bro, bro, the other day, my girl, uh, my girl said we needed to get an ottoman, which is like the most fucking fiance thing to do. We need, we need to get an ottoman. God forbid we sit on the couch with our feet on the ground like peasants. God forbid. Right, we need an ottoman. So when I wake up to piss in the night, I have something to slam my shins into. We need the ottoman. So we're at Gray and Barrel, right? I'm just wandering around. I look over my left shoulder. I see this Middle Eastern dude standing on this carpet. Now. I don't say anything, okay? I'm not gonna say a single fucking thing. I just looked over and I went, <laughs> that's the best I could do. 
That's knee jerk. That's a reflex. I see a Middle Eastern doing it on a carpet. I'm gonna chuckle, dude. I'm sorry. I gave it a huh and I shut it down real quick. Okay? Because that guy is there just so he could furnish his apartment. It doesn't matter that I think he's about to take off on that fucking thing. Okay? I was 100% certain. At one point in time, he bends over to check the price and curls the front of the carpet. I was like, oh, he is out of here! What the hell is a security guard gonna do? He don't got a chance, bro. He went under the hood. It's about to be Fast and the Furious Arabian Nights in this bitch. He is gone. But I didn't say anything, I kept it in here, okay? Because it's not life or death. Okay, if it's not a life or death situation, you keep that shit in here. Now don't get me wrong, if we're on the edge of a cliff and it's me, a carpet, and a Middle Eastern dude, then a pack of hyenas is closing in on us, there might be some words exchanged, okay? I'm not gonna be too direct about it. I'll probably be like, what do you think we should do to get out of this predicament? Middle Eastern guy next to the carpet? He's looking at me like, the fuck you want me to do? It's a whole pack of hyenas. I'm like, motherfucker, there's a whole new world. If we just get on this goddamn carpet and go to safety, show me the world, okay? You've seen the movie too, it's a two-seater. We can fit on this bitch. Show me the goddamn world. Life or death, you can say it, okay? Life or death, your prejudices start to come out. I'm not even talking about racial either. You know what I mean? Like, for, I won't have a doctor with an underbite. That's a prejudice I got. <laughs> not gonna happen. I don't care if there's no correlation between the two. You're not gonna walk into my surgery like, okay, what are we fixing today? <laughs> How about your jaw, you fucking bulldog? How dare you? You know, walk into my surgery looking like a cash register? Cha-ching, let's put that thing back where it's supposed to be. Let's so walk outside, collect some rainwater, asshole. How dare you? How dare you? That's all I'm trying to say. It's sometimes life or death makes even the most offensive situation tolerable, okay? Even racist situations. Like for example, blackface is wrong. Racist, cannot do it. We agree? We agree. Okay, good. <laughs> blackface is wrong. Can't do it. Good. Cannot do it. Blackface is wrong. Well, I have to ask the black faces. I can't ask the fucking rest of y'all. Your opinions don't matter, it's up to them. They make the rules. Black face is wrong, it's racist, you cannot do it, okay? Under no circumstances, cannot do it. Then you see them Navy SEALs commercials, you're like, all right, well, kind of, sometimes you could do it, <laughs> right? The whole Navy SEALs commercial is like, look how cool black face is on a helicopter. <laughs> Look how cool blackface is on a boat. Blackface in the water, they can swim. I don't know if they say that. I don't know if they say that. I, that, I might have added that part. I might have added that part. That's on me. But I'm just saying, life or death situation, it changes the stakes. Let's say, for example, me and you, we're going on a mission to save America from high gas prices. When gas is like $1.50, America is very progressive, right? We're like, you have to respect all the cultures of the world. Gas gets them $5, we're like, yo! They might need some democracy out there in the Middle East, Biden. it. See this $5? How do they make women dress like that when gas is $5, Biden? it? They just throwing gay people off buildings when gas is $5? Liberate those people! <laughs> so let's say, for example, you and I are going on a mission, save America. The mission takes place at 1 a.m. <laughs> that is an important piece of the information on the call sheet. You have your complexion. I have the complexion of an iPhone flashlight. <laughs> if you don't give me blackface, we're fucking dead. I'm a disco ball in the desert. They're gonna see us from a mile away. It's headshots for the both of us. You wanna see her again? You gotta paint me the fuck up, bro. Full thing. You don't have to do the lips and the tap shoes. That's a little bit much, but you gotta paint me up. You gotta paint me the fuck up if you wanna survive. You're not gonna let me go on that mission with you without putting on blackface for your safety. Just like I'm not gonna let you smile. There's certain things, guys, there's certain things that we have to do so we get home. Those beautiful white teeth. Lighten up the night, I can't take that risk. 
I can see white people in the crowd looking for black people to see if it's okay to laugh at this joke. And the fact that you're having trouble finding them is exactly the point that I'm trying to make, okay? It's about privilege, all right? I understand I have white privilege, okay? But you have night privilege, and we need to bring those together. Don't get me wrong, we get pulled over on the ride home, that's where I take care of business. I'm sorry, officer, was there a problem? <laughs> Speeding must have been my black foot. I'll take care of that. <laughs> is it fucked up? Yeah, I guess. It is. Is that your girlfriend right there? How long you guys been together? About eight years. Eight years? Amazing. Are you on birth control? <laughs> what type are you on? You don't know. Does he just push you down the stairs once a month? Is that what happens to him? <laughs> What's your birth control called? Tumble? <laughs> he just gives you some vitamins every morning, that's it. You don't know what the fuck you're taking, huh? <laughs> Is it a pill? Is it a, like a ring? It's a pill. Okay, you went old school. You got the pill. That's what's up. Because there's a lot of birth controls out there. What do you think the best birth control is, ladies? Plan B. Plan B, that's a good one. That's a good one right there. I guarantee she got HPV 100%, but guarantee, but it's all good. Most of us do. It is what it is. You know what I mean? That's chicken pox at this point. You're a real one for that. Plan B, just gobbling them shits up like fucking Flintstone vitamins. That's what I'm talking about. That's a soldier right there. <laughs> Fuck it, leave it in. I got some extra on the bedside table. <laughs> what else? What else, ladies? What else? IUD. IUD is an interesting one. IUD is basically like a... There's birth control USB, the girls <laughs> insert in their pussy and they just leave it there. They just stuff it in there and leave it there and then they just hope they don't fuck a black guy to knock that shit out. <laughs> you basically rolling the dice. Black dude get deep in there, he comes out a Prince Albert, so you gotta be very careful, okay? You got jewelry on your dick after fucking <laughs> these IUD chicks. <laughs> what else, what else, one more vasectomy. Ooh, is that, did you get that? Bro, you look like they left Val Kilmer in a bathtub, man. <laughs> That's a beautiful head of hair, though, for sure. Is that yours, or do you guys buy wigs together? Guys, guys, guys. <laughs> She hates me now. Don't beat me up. Don't beat me up. I'm a good, sweet boy. Okay? You didn't like that one that much. Was it wrong, though? No. <laughs> How long you guys been together? Four years? Okay, bro. Is he a big dick white? You look big dicked, bro. You look big dicked because you're the black girl and you don't even have cool sneakers on. So you definitely, you got something, dude. You're packing something there, man. It's unbelievable, that guy, right? Four years, man. God bless. And you guys, a uh, little marriage thing popping off or what? Oh, you're already married. Congratulations, kids. Kids. Oh, you made him get cut? Oh, that's some good pussy right there, bro. Nah, that happens, man. Come fast too many times, you gotta do something. That's really why birth control exists, man. It's not, it's not for y'all to get pregnant, it's so that we can get those last two pumps. <laughs> like, how many times has your girl been like very close and you're like, oh, fuck. She's like, don't come to, right? Yeah, like. You know who Antonio Cromartie is? She knows. 
Antonio Cromartie is this football player who has 17 kids. After his 15th kid, he got a vasectomy. Now, I don't know if you guys know what a vasectomy is. Basically, they cut the vas deferens. That's the highway from your balls to your penis hole, right? And it takes the sperm from balls, but they just cut that shit. And Antonio Cromartie had two more kids after the vasectomy. <laughs> That's how athletic that motherfucker was, man. His sperm were in there like Mario Kart Rainbow Road, just hopping over to the next side. <laughs> what else? What else? One more. You said to swallow? She's a keeper, dog. There it is. She's a keeper, bro. That's crazy. Usually the people with the man bun swallow, but it's cool. It's cool. Like, it's cool that you guys have that relationship where it's equal. You know what I mean? Does sometimes he ask for a little? He's like, just spit a little in my mouth. <laughs> You gotta feed him like a baby bird. Just hip, hip, hip. <laughs> ah, Texas. Oh, Texas. We didn't talk about uh, how they're taking away your scoop scoops, ladies. Isn't that fucked up? They trying to take away your scoop scoops? It's unbelievable. I just want to let y'all know right now, ladies, uh, I am with you. I think it's your body, your choice. I agree with you on that, 100%. I agree with you when you say that men should have no say in the decisions you make with your bodies. Those are your decisions to make and yours alone. And I feel that way because uh, at the end of the day, when we all go up to heaven and God's like, why are we all killing babies? We're gonna be like, y'all. <laughs> I think they were very clear whose decision this was, God. Uh, <laughs> looks like you need to pay for your sins, babe. <laughs> Even though I paid for your sins. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Chivalry ain't dead to that baby, as you know the rules. <laughs> uh, oh, man. Yeah, abortion. Abortion, 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 man. It's a tricky one. When I was living uh, in my old place in New York, I lived down the block from an abortion clinic. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> location, location, location. <laughs> and no bullshit, that's the wildest place in New York. Like, it's a fucking carnival outside of there every single day. Like, people come to New York and they go to like Broadway plays and shit. They'll literally spend thousands of dollars to watch Harry Potter the musical when they could just stand outside the clinic and watch something really disappear. <laughs> Fetus the leaders. <laughs> I remember one time I was walking by the clinic and I saw a father and his daughter outside and his daughter looked like she was 10 years old. Now, I don't want to divide the crowd politically here, uh, but for me, that's a little late. This is just me. I'm not putting my views on you. But personally, I think a fetus becomes a life around the third grade. That, that's, I think that's a life. I do believe that's a life, okay? Maybe we could roll it back a few years from there, but definitely if you could spell abortion, we don't abort you. That's just the rule that I have in my book, okay? So naturally, I'm like, yo, I gotta save this girl's life. I walk over, I get a little closer. Turns out he wasn't aborting his daughter, thank God. Uh, what he was actually doing was protesting the abortion clinic. And I've never seen this shit before in real life. It was crazy. Like, he's like heckling these girls as they go in. You know, he's just screaming at them, you're gonna burn in hell. And these girls were so New York about it. They're like, I just have chlamydia, you pussy. <laughs> burn in hell, I'm burning now. That's why I'm going to the fucking clinic. So I'm watching this go down and I'm torn, right? Because naturally as a man, I want to protect these women, right? But as a comic, I love a rose, right? So <laughs> I'm like, how do I fit in this shit? And then all of a sudden this UPS employee walks into the clinic and I had to. I had to. At least someone wants to deliver. It was the right thing to say. <laughs> Guys, 
He got in on it. He was like, same day. It was unbelievable, bro. Like, chemistry was there. Chemistry was there. So I'm standing outside a clinic, right next to this dude who was like very passionate about abortion. I realized I'd never spoken to one of these guys before. So I'm like, I just gotta talk to him. So I went up to him and I was like, hey man, I don't wanna interrupt your whole take your daughter to work day. I think, <laughs> I think it's great. You wanna spend time with your family. Obviously not everybody here gets that. I go, buddy, I just gotta know, why are you so against abortion? And the guy looks at me, he goes, I'll tell you what changed it all for me. It's these new sonograms. <laughs> Thank God a few of you guys said, what? <laughs> We're idiots. I didn't even know they upgraded the sonographs. They completely changed the sonograms. It's not like the uh, back in the day shit to look at you and pay your cable. Remember those? <laughs> Remember the black paper with the gray clouds on it? Those were abortable. Let's just be honest, right? Like. <laughs> Doctor hands you that shit like an etcher sketch. You're like, not today. Right? <laughs> See you later, kiddo. But the new ones are HD, 4D, not 3D, 4D. You could hear the baby like, keep me. I'm in here. What are you doing out there? That's not where you hang a shirt. So I'm looking at these images, right? And I'm like, man, this is visceral. This is, hard to, this is hard to disagree with. And then I noticed all the images he's showing me are from much later on in the pregnancy. So I was like, hold up, hold up, hold up. What about early on? He goes, I don't care. It's killing a baby. I'm like, but bro, it's not even a baby yet. He goes, yeah, but if you leave it there, it's going to grow into a baby, so it's a baby. And I was like, you know what? Your daughter's fucking hot, bro. <laughs> this guy loses his fucking mind. <laughs> the fuck you mean my daughter's hot? She's 10 years old. What the hell is wrong with you? I'm like, yeah, but if we leave her there. <laughs> She's gonna grow into a woman, pops. <laughs> we pedophiles are pro-life, you decide. <laughs> now that right there was a seamless transition into an ad if I've ever seen one before. Flawless perfection, and you deserve it, but so does BetOnline.ag, the greatest gambling platform on the planet. Gamble on whatever sport you want, they have them all. And I told you this earlier, but I don't think you really understood what I was saying. They are matching 50% of your initial deposit up to $1,000. You put in a grand, they're giving you a free $500 to gamble with. Do you know how much $500 is? That's a yearly WNBA salary. They're just gonna give you so you can have fun and gamble. As long as you use the promo code Andrew at betonline.ag, you are welcome. Now let's get back to this special. How are we gonna get on the same page? Ladies, how are we gonna get on the same page? We agree on most shit, right? You think that we disagree on a lot, sweetheart? Like what, like what? Really? I went to one of them women's marches and we had a lot in common. I saw those girls screaming, free the nipple. <laughs> yeah, that sounds pretty good. Right? They were screaming, we should be able to have sex with as many guys as we want. Yes, you should. <laughs> if we get pregnant, we should be able to abort it. Hopefully. <laughs> and we need to work so we can pay our half. Hallelujah. <laughs> Fellas, get down here. It's happening. We've reached common ground. It was unbelievable. These women were fighting for the right to become the men they've always hated. <laughs> Just walking around with their shirts off, fucking whoever, not worried about the kid. I'm like, are y'all feminists or fuckboys? What is this shit? <laughs> Just saying, we're on the same team, you know what I mean? And that's good because this is as good as it gets, ladies. Y'all can't move anywhere else and it gets better for y'all. You gotta deal with us being sexist. That's a fact. We are fucking sexist. We say stupid shit. Like, women can't drive. Nah. <laughs> women can't drive. Nah. But in the Middle East, they're like, no, seriously, women can't drive. So, <laughs> we don't play that shit out here. Are there women driving? Ahmed, give me the fucking stones. These bitches out here driving. <laughs> gotta teach them a lesson with stones. 
I'm not saying there aren't things that y'all gotta go through. Obviously, you know, like you, you might have a daughter that has low self-esteem because she's comparing herself to these unrealistic images every single day, and that's really fucked up. Um, but but in China, <laughs> you can't have a daughter. So <laughs> yeah, you have a daughter, they just mash it into an iPhone. That's the policy. <laughs> Enjoy your FaceTime. Enjoy your FaceTime. There's a little Chinese girl inside every one of your iPhones. Why do you think when your phone breaks, they say put in a bag of rice? You think that's a coincidence? You think that's a coincidence? It's to soak up her tears, okay? Have some respect. We love y'all, okay? And we want to make you happy. I think most guys want to make you happy, especially sexually. There's this rumor like we don't care about satisfying you. That's not true at all. We feel pathetic if we don't satisfy you. That shit is just mad difficult. If we're gonna keep it a buck, it's tricky, yo. The clit, I don't know exactly where it is. I still do Ash Wednesday every time I'm down there, dog. Like, right, like, longitude, latitude, you bump into it. Father, Son, Holy Ghost, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. You do that enough times, you get baptized. <laughs> Pussies are tricky. Nobody ever stared down the barrel of a pussy and was like, that's how I would have designed it, just like that. <laughs> Two lips, why stop at two? Four, double down. Double down on two, always. Out of hood, I want that pussy looking emo. I want that pussy looking like a school shooter. Cause once a month, it's a massacre down there. <laughs> There's a lot of things you ladies have harder in life, but satisfying the opposite sex is not one of them. Let's be honest, it's easy to make a dude come. You agree, right? That's not an accomplishment. <laughs> it is easy. We have pre-come. <laughs> that means before we come, we come. <laughs> We're never not coming. We turn 13 just leak for the rest of our lives. <laughs> you don't ever have to ask us, ladies. Like sometimes girls are like, did you come already? Four hours ago, sweetheart. <laughs> okay, you touch my knee at dinner, a few of my sperm are like, fuck it. You just didn't notice because pre-cum doesn't shoot out. It just climbs to the top and then chills there like it's in a jacuzzi at a ski resort. <laughs> I'm not getting out with a towel, bro. It looks fucking freezing out there. <laughs> it's just easier. It has to be easier. I'll be honest. I, I never sucked dick, but I could do it. I, I know that. I could do it. It's positive feedback built into the dick, okay? You sucking a dick good? Hard. Sucking a dick bad? Shoelace. You could be the best at eating pussy in the world or the worst at eating pussy in the world. Pussy still stares at you like Stephen Hawking. Just motionless drooling. If someone kidnapped my mom, and they were like, yo, Schultz, we're gonna kill your mom unless you either make Ted come or Rebecca come. Becca, why don't you grab us some seltzers or something, okay? <laughs> Ted and I got a life to save. I go in there with Ted, it's light work, okay? I go in there, he's like, listen, what I like, shut the fuck up, Ted. Sit down, get your dick sucked like a man. I go in there with Becca, we are rolling the dice. I'm down there, I'm giving it everything. She's up there like, I feel like you're just doing this to save your mom. Like. <laughs> So it's easier, we can all acknowledge that. But that doesn't mean that we don't wanna make you come. We do wanna make you come, and we feel pathetic if we don't make you come, and here's the most fucked up part of it all. We never know if you actually do come. <laughs> right? There's no sign, it's not like your titties light up or nothing, there's nothing. 
right? The closest we have is sometimes during sex, you be looking all beautiful, and then out of nowhere, you just go, <laughs> I don't know what the fuck that shit is, but if you turn into Big Ed from 90 Day Fiance out of nowhere, you just, <laughs> I'm trying to stuff as much dick in you as I possibly can. Okay, I squeeze my butt cheeks. I pump and squeeze. I think I got an extra centimeter dick in my butt cheeks. I ain't gonna lie. I squeeze my butt cheeks, I might pop your head right out your fucking shoulders. Fuck around me when I squeeze my butt cheeks. We just want validation too, okay? And since we never know if you orgasm, we gotta settle for the side effects of sex, all right? That's why we're into the weird shit. You queef, we get excited. Okay, that same exact sound comes out of your butthole, repulsed for 48 hours. How could you destroy the fabric of our relationship by farting in front of me like that? That's disgusting. That sound comes out of your pussy after sex, I got my hand to my ear like Hulk Hogan, like let her rip, baby! I'm waiting for it. When my girl gets off the bed after sex, I'm waiting for that propeller to start spinning. She takes two steps and just... Oh, babe, you taking a flight? You going to the Bahamas or something? I know you're not going to the Virgin Islands after what I did to you. It's the same thing with squirting. We know it's pee, ladies. We're not stupid. Obviously it's pee, you don't have water balloons inside you. But here's the thing, we don't give a fuck. Cause we made you pee. We love it, we talking shit, look at your sheets. You see how stupid your sheets look? Ha! I got crop circles on your fucking sheets. You see that shit? I might not make you come, I'll make you do laundry, that's a fact. I do a load, you do a load. That's how things work around here. <laughs> Guys, thank y'all so much, man. Thank y'all so much. Exactly how all of this goes So real for the cameras, I don't like to pose When I go out a few weeks on the road One million, two million, three million, four Think that I'm stopping, you got me confused a little bit Who are you to say shit to me? You seen that slope, it get slippery Y'all type of riches and riches Elevate daily, baby, I ain't scared of heights no more Got be saying, Russ, I got it, you don't gotta fight no more Okay, okay Guys, I got to give a huge shout out to betonline.ag for allowing us to put out this special uncut, unfiltered, and uncensored. Thank you guys so much, okay? Betonline.ag, literally the most trusted and best gambling platform on the planet. If you're going to gamble on sports, go gamble with them. UFC, football, NBA, and WNBA. I don't know if I've mentioned them at all during this special when we were doing some promos, but you can also gamble on them as well. Make sure you use the promo code Andrew and they are matching that initial deposit, 50% of it up to $1,000, okay? I'm so grateful. Thank you guys. And if you didn't buy the special before, you just watch it now. That is a great way for you to support. BetOnline.ag, promo code Andrew. Go get it. I hope you win tons. Thank you guys so much for watching. Peace.